I've just been mainly watching Dragon Ball Z. One of my best friends, Sean, would always tell me, yo, you gotta watch Naruto, you gotta watch this, you gotta watch that. Always trying to get me to watch stuff and I never gave in. Finally, I gave in. I watched Naruto. I became so obsessed with it. I was like, I just wanted to talk about it all day, every day. Scheduling is so important. And I think that's something that I really learned in my job before anywhere else. Well, from this time to this time, I'm doing this. From this time to this time, I'm doing that. Because I noticed the less disciplined I am, the worse I'm gonna do at my job in general. What is the most important piece of advice you can give someone who's trying to start a podcast? I'd say cheers cheers and welcome back to another installation of the Doughboys podcast I'm your host flipping it with Cisco as always I am joined by our lovely studly co-host Alpha Logan and we're joined by a special guest today he goes by the name of Kevin and he is one half of the founders of the one of the top anime podcasts the Shonen Tapes we are we are Pleased to have Kevin on the podcast today. How are you doing? I'm oh, doing course, great, man. Thank you guys for having so, me. So, yeah, I mean, you run a podcast for anime primarily. And tell us your story. How did that yeah. get started? How did you get into anime? Tell us the origins. Yeah. So, I feel like a majority of people our age probably got into it the same way, just stumbling across Dragon Ball Z. Like, realistically, that's, I feel like anybody who's into anime around us, like that, that's like their story. So, that happened and i've just been mainly watching dragon ball z and then as i got older one of my good friends one of my best friends sean would always tell me yo you gotta watch naruto you gotta watch this you gotta watch that always trying to get me to watch stuff and i never gave in finally i gave in and uh i just became obsessed with naruto probably around like 2017 and this was uh, nearing of it ending i, I believe and uh, i just became obsessed with it and a year prior to me like binging the show and watching it my friends kept coming up to me. Let's make a podcast. Let's make a podcast. And I was like, no, no, no. Cause I'm not a, I'm going to be honest. Like I don't really listen to podcasts myself. So I was like, why would I do one if I don't, if I'm not a huge listener? Um, and so I watched Naruto. I became so obsessed with it. I was like, I just wanted to talk about it all day, every day. And so I finally gave in and I was like, all right, guys, you win. Like, let's do a podcast. So we started doing a, an anime podcast and a rap podcast. So the Shonen Tapes actually used to be half hip hop, half rap, where we did Tuesday episodes of anime, Thursday episodes hip hop. Uh, it started off with four hosts and we lost half of everything. So now it's just two of our two of hosts and we stopped doing hip hop because we saw that anime was just overall getting a better reaction, more episode downloads, more views. And we just decided to stick to kind of like what was best. And uh, the other co-hosts were all still like best friends and stuff, but they just they just uh, yeah a couple of things I wanted to touch on. If you guys go back and listen to the the original episodes of the Shonen tapes, it is hilarious because there's literally like I like I was like Kevin, yo, is there like ten people on this? He's like, no, it's only six. <laughs> that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> but you, it's like it was so hard to dif differentiate uh, depending on, on the host. The only people, the only person I yeah. could tell apart from anybody was um sean because if you listen to the recording sean's voice yeah. is just super deep he sounds literally, like this uh, i'm sean um but yeah. no that that's definitely cool yeah. and another it's thing that you said like if you talk to anyone from like our generation like you know what dbz is and and stuff along those lines and it's funny because yeah. so i went to church on sunday and my pastor said he was going to go super sane on these tools and it was so funny and he was like, wow. yeah, I know you guys are going to make fun of me. But yes, I watched Dragon Ball Z. And then he made another like Star Wars reference towards the end. And I was like, yeah, this, this is where I belong. <laughs> um, my I man. had a question, but now it's something <laughs> in my mind. I'm sure it'll come to me in, in a minute. But uh, yeah, no, that, that's super cool. So how long have you been doing the, the, the podcast now? And how long have you been doing it on video? We started late 2020, like very late 2020. So right around the um, time where we all started staying at home pretty much as well. Uh, so it, it just ended up working out video is fairly new and that's that's thanks to cisco over here he started he started badgering me he said hey when are you guys getting on video when are you guys getting on video when he's gonna over and over and i was like you know what fine like let's try it and we have a discord as well too so we had some guys in there being like yo you guys ever gonna move over to youtube and slowly realizing like there is a whole different market for it there are some people who only consume uh, and I'm sure you guys know as well too on video and there's others that just listen to it while they work like through Spotify or Apple music or something like that. But video, like realistically, we've only done like two, two YouTube videos. Um, Are you and, um, and familiar with Mr. Beast? 
So, yes. so you know the, yes, the I, first I viral video that he had or whatever, the one that actually got traction where I forgot he counted from one to, I don't know, a million or whatever. You I know, think it was a million. He counted yeah. one to a million because he wanted to do something productive as he finished watching Naruto and there was way too many episodes of Naruto for him to just sit down and just watch. That's that's not. That still takes concentration though. I mean, you got to be good at multitasking to pay attention to the story and characters and fights. Yeah, and just 100%. Count, I, mean, I, I, don't I think guess. I'd, I'd be able to do that. <laughs> um, okay, so as I mentioned in the the beginning of the podcast, you your podcast for anime is ranked. How how did you find out you were ranked? How did that happen? What was your ranked? I mean, I doubt it was like you know ranked a millionth out of a million. No, yeah, we well we go up and down. Um, you can look up where you rank on like various websites, and it kind of like compares like the downloads and average listens and episodes also can rank so sometimes you'll find our podcast like you said in the top 10 other times you know on slower weeks we might drop to like 50s right 30s so it, it all goes up and down but what's funny is every now and then uh some random media site like dextero i don't know if you guys are familiar with them on x you know formerly known as twitter but you know they, they have a pretty huge following and we saw that this past october they ranked us as one of like the top five best anime podcasts to listen to and like that's happened to us like a number of times with and it's funny because they don't even let us know they don't tag us we just see a surge and we're like what happens and then we just come across it months later so we, i think we got to start googling ourselves a little, a little more often whenever you first started the podcast i know you said it was just you know you wanted to talk anime all day every day so it was really kind of a passion thing but was there anything in the back yeah. of your mind or maybe like a goal yeah. of wanting to one day monetize what you were building yeah yeah absolutely so I did it for fun, not expecting much. And then as the weeks went on, you know, some of the other co-hosts were like, hey, look, this is the type of money that people are making with fairly large followings. And then I started kind of comparing us to them from a quality standpoint, from an entertainment standpoint. And I was like, hey, like, we're not really too far off from some of these guys. And uh, it was it was actually Sean was one of the people that was like, bro, like, I'm, I'm trying to like do this. I'm trying to have this to be like the main breadwinner someday if we can get to that point. Um, and you know, it, it took us a little while to start taking it super seriously. And ever since we have, you know, things have been looking better, but, but to answer your question, yeah, that is definitely a goal of ours. Yeah. Are you familiar with Gary V? Okay, cool. Well, whenever you yes. were talking about yeah. how this was something that really started out of, out of passion, I'm thinking of the clip where he was like, if you love Alf, start an Alf blog. If you love Smurfs, Smurf it up. Basically because of yep. the content, there's a way to monetize yep. really every single passion on the planet. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, when I think of Gary Vee, I think of all the clips also poking a little fun at him where he's just like, imagine, imagine your arm getting squashed. Like, imagine, have you guys seen those? Because he, he's so, he's so like, yeah, extreme. I like the, <laughs> he's, he's a gay guy. Person I, I like yard stuff. sales and stuff. That stuff's really funny. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy because yeah, so, so obviously like you're not in the resale space. Uh, we are, but it's crazy how Gary Vee mm-hmm. has had, has touched different people in different ways and although like he wasn't the, the catalyst that kind of pushed yeah. you to do this there are clips that still resonate with you and that you're like aware of that's happened to kind of continue pushing on the podcast um i did want to bring up a story which i find very hilarious and i don't know if you've talked about it on your podcast but can you explain or tell us the story of the uh adult uh actress who was almost on your podcast <sighs> yeah as you said uh, we got interest from an adult actress and she had a pretty big following. Like it was like over, or it was like, was it like one or two, you know, one, like two, three, anime or cosplay right? or amount. what was it like, what was her, her niche? No, she was just, she was just an, an actress that was interested in. And I, honestly, like I wasn't the one that looked You're her, to be honest. Yeah. I gotta ask, I gotta ask my co host N- N- names will not be named. And so, um, we, <laughs> so we wanted to do it. And uh, one of the co-hosts basically was just like, no, like, like we're, we don't want to like kind of stoop down to that level more or less. And it became like a big internal conflict, like within the podcast, because some of us were just like, Hey, like this could, this could fire us off. This could get in front of people. And then the other half were just like, no, like we're not doing this. Um, and so we, we ended up not being able to, to actually get her on. I, I personally think it was like a missed opportunity, but it, it was a it was a pretty big conflict within within the show, like behind yeah, the scenes, I, I at least for a little while. Yeah, I mean, it was like, I guess you could say kind of like family and like image reasons, you know, like not wanting to be necessarily like associated with that. Um, and that's I, I, I can say like that wasn't me. Like that wasn't I wasn't one of the ones yeah, saying no. 
Um, but yeah, you were that's, cool. that's more or less what the chill. reasoning was. Yeah, Cheryl, Cheryl would like chop yeah. my head off. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. Just for even looking the direction. Yeah. <laughs> I want to take a quick moment to interrupt the podcast and talk about this video sponsor, OA Alphas. OA Alphas offers high quality leads lists to help you grow and scale your online arbitrage business. Whenever I started getting into online arbitrage, leads lists were foundational for helping me understand the OA business and growing my business to its height. OA Alphas allows you to get profitable online arbitrage product leads every single day, Monday through Friday, in exchange for a set monthly fee. If you're looking to grow your online arbitrage business or gain back some of your time or learn more about OA, then I highly recommend you check out the link down below to visit oaalphas.com and start receiving those profitable leads every single day. Thank you, OA Alphas, for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, and I was still at the point where getting permission for my wife, I was like, and she kind of like gave me a look. I knew it was a, it was an argument to be had, but... I was, uh, you know, for the Shonen tapes, I was willing to do it. Plus, it, you know, we, we, it would just be a podcast. You know what I'm saying? It's not like we'd be doing anything That's else. Right. I mean, so. it's not like you were going to interview know. her in person or anything. It was going to be virtual. Exactly. And so, yeah, okay, just, so yeah. you started this podcast 2020. Uh, it's grown to the point where you do get ranked. And I think you were, like, you, you mentioned that you were also nationally ranked for, like, the year's worth or whatever on, a, on like, a newsletter. I remember you shared that with me. And so how many episodes are you guys in right now? Two, we're, we're about to hit 250 and then, yeah and the reason is because we used to do twice a week and so ever since we scaled back like that number obviously has slowed down because now we only do one episode a week soon into like your episodes did you realize that you guys have really bad hip-hop takes and you guys are bad rappers <laughs> well, um well it was when I'd, I'd say probably like around 100 episodes um i started to notice the download number for anime was was larger than the hip-hop numbers and it's also like a, a concept of like we're into new anime but we're not necessarily into new hip-hop and that's obviously a problem if you want to be a hip-hop podcast you have to like the new music that's coming out um, i'm sure there's other hip-hop podcasts that you know do may primarily focus on the old stuff but that's not where we want it to be we kind of want it to be hip and uh we just we just we just really aren't with the times of this, this current that. and then so that kind of leads into my next question so you, you found out pretty early that you guys just weren't a hip-hop podcast and then you continued with the anime and how soon after did you guys because you you started a patreon and so you have subscribers to your patreon and so how soon after till you guys came up with that idea and kind of set that that whole jazz up it probably took it probably took maybe like a couple of months i want to say like like four to six months where we decided, hey, like, let's take this up to the next notch. Let's create a Discord. Um, let's create a Patreon. And let's just start making this real and start making some avenue for revenues open up to us a little bit, where our main focus throughout the first maybe like 100 to 100, like 25 episodes was let's just grow our following and not really worry about money yet. And after we do that, then we can start thinking about monetizing, whether that's through ads, Patreon or so, other means. And so how is so how's the Patreon doing now? And what's like because i know you guys are, are new to video and stuff like that so what's kind of like the next steps for you guys as far as you know increasing your revenue goals? i think you know you mentioned in the pot in this podcast a little earlier that eventually you would like it to be like the main the main thing um because just like me we both have w2 jobs that yeah. require a lot of attention so i guess what's the next steps for you to kind of hopefully reach that that dream goal eventually yeah just honestly seeing where it goes in the sense of like I want to first tackle YouTube and see what kind of revenue that brings and what kind of following that brings. Um, I've noticed when we do put our focus heavily into something, we do see results. We've had videos reach um, up to like 500, 600K pretty easily on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook. So I'm seeing like wherever our attention is, typically it does work, um, but it is just the two of us and we're, we're not... Uh, you know, we don't have a team of editors or content creators or anything like that. And we both also have families and full-time jobs. So it's trying. So, so, so the focus right now is the most important thing of where we can put that. And so right now to, to directly answer, like we're going to do YouTube with like a side of social media while still maintaining like the discord and the Patreon. Um, and it just, it just kind of depends and on then, how the YouTube does, to be honest. Yeah, that answers the question. To, um, and then this, I, I've recently been asking our guests this question because um, I find it very interesting. Um, when you come to roadblocks or things that you kind of are hesitant to start, like what, what was for you to get on YouTube? What was the fear or what was the roadblock? Or what was kind of the bottleneck holding you back from getting on YouTube until recently? Yeah. Um, 
this <laughs> this is gonna sound a little goofy. I had a little thing on my nose. It was like a little like I don't I don't know. I, I thought it was sunburn. Kevin for thought he months, had so nose cancer honest. or skin cancer on his nose, legit for no. I really did for like four months. Like I, I was freaking out because I went somewhere. It was actually Cisco's like wedding. I went. I came back, and then I just I was like, oh, my nose got a little sunburned. And then like a month later, it started peeling really badly. And I don't really sunburn like that. And then it got worse and it got worse. And I was like, oh, what is going on? So I eventually went to the, you know, the doctors and they're like, oh, it's like an infection. And then it wouldn't go away. So what would happen was I would peel and there would just be this big gross scab on my nose. And I was like, dude, I'm not trying to be on YouTube and have like a scabby nose. I know that's that might be superficial. People don't care what you look like at the end of the day. But still, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just I was like, let me let my nose heal up a little bit. Um, I also didn't notice how easy it was. Um, and, and Cisco kind of like got me hip to it. He's like, dude, just use your camera. Just use webcams cost this much. This costs that much. And I was like, yeah, I just, I just got to do it. So what we did to get over the hump was we made a, a video, a Patreon exclusive just to test the waters a little bit, see the reaction and, and see like how we would feel rather than just jumping straight into YouTube. And after we did that, we we're like, yeah, that was actually pretty easy. Like, let's just do it. So ripping off the bandaid essentially was, was really what catapulted us forward. Yeah. And to... And like, I knew you were going to do well on video just because, A, I know how, who you are as a person. And two, your, your, I'm not sure about Sean, but your W 2 job is sales. Like, you're talking to people all day long. So the camera is just an extension oh, yeah. of a person. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, so like, you, you're, yep. you're fabulous. Parts to Kevin. Right, um, right back at you. Thanks. Thanks. Right back at you, Cisco. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you never know what's going on I mean, with people. Really. This is me too. giving Kevin a hard time, but I think that was just. A vain excuse for him not to get on camera, but it's okay. He's on camera now. I mean, it, dude, it was you. You saw it. In it person, was just a man. scab was, that wouldn't go away. It was gross. It was a big scab, though. It, it looked like I fell on it. It was, it was, yeah. it was a, a bit of a confidence thing, yeah. too, you know. Um, and that kind of leads to another thing. So, you know, with the dynamic that Logan and Josh and I have, it's a little bit different, right? Because, as all of you know, I have a wife, a daughter, a full time job, and a bunch of other things kind of going on. And although their their schedules are completely busy as well, they don't have a, a a spouse that they need to kind of give attention to as well, or a child. Yeah. In your case, even worse, you, you have yeah. a, a two year old. Um, so, how does yeah. your how does time management play a role in you being able to, to create this this content and kind of explain that towards us in your scheduling? Scheduling is so, so, so important. And I think that's something that I really learned in my job before anywhere else. Uh, like you said, I'm in sales. So I have a task for everything on every point of my calendar. And I know from this time to this time, I'm doing this from this time, to this time I'm doing that because I notice the less disciplined I am, the worse I'm going to do with my job in general. And if I just apply that to life, the same thing goes. So if I willy nilly want to just record on any old day, and the wife has, hey, I thought we were going to go to a good dinner tonight, or the, you know, the, the baby wants attention, or my friends wanted to hang out. It's, it's just, it would have been a nightmare. So what I do is I have specific days set for scheduling, specific like times for creating content, for editing, and I try to plan it around times where like my family and my friends are free as well too. So then that doesn't coincide with that. So if I know nap time is around this time, it's like, okay, I can do some content creation during my lunchtime at work. So that way I'm not neglecting like the baby or the wife. Um, or if it's the weekends, right, let me not plan something on, on like Saturday night. So then I can make my friend's birthday or Korean barbecue with, with Cisco here. And all right, that's, that's, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Josh. Yeah, 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 great question. So we do all different types of episodes. So we, we do comparisons sometimes. So we'll have like comparisons of show versus show. We'll do comparisons of character versus character. Those characters can be in the same show. They can be in different shows. So you could do like the Goku versus Naruto tape. And we and since we're the Shonen tapes, our episodes are, are called tapes. So I'll just refer to it as that. Sometimes we'll do reactions to a new show. Uh, we're we'll, just the first few episodes have come out. We'll do reviews of shows. And sometimes we create we do like creative topics as well, too. So like uh, we did one where it's like like around the Halloween time where it was like, what, what is your like ideal horror anime? Like, like what is important for you? And so Sean was like, OK, I want a ghost type story where this, this and that kind of like these shows. And then I would go in. So it's kind of a mixture of of reactions, comparisons, theory, crafting and creativity. I think, you know, being a fan of the Shonen tapes, one of my my favorite episodes is when you go into that theory of like, uh, what if, you know, Vegeta had to fight Sasuke 
who would win that battle and stuff like that. That to yeah. me, uh, that's always fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, okay, so obviously we are a for the most part like a business entrepreneurial uh, podcast. So anybody who is trying to start a podcast, what is you've been doing it for four years now, tw- since twenty twenty, and you've obviously went from having a bunch of hosts now to just you and Sean consistently every every single week to you know bringing down from anime and rap to just anime and i'm sure you've hit other bumps down the road what is uh the most important piece of advice you can give someone who's trying to start a podcast i'd say just rip off the band-aid and do it because after you do that you start to get a feel for if it's something you're gonna have fun with or not um some of our co-hosts saw that it eventually kind of felt like a job and so obviously that's not something that they wanted to continue versus myself and Sean more so we're on the side of like, this is a lot of fun. You know, we get to sit here and talk about something that we're passionate about and everything else. It's okay if you don't have the best mic. We had specifically Sean too, I'm going to call him out. He had the worst mic when, when we started out. Um, we didn't edit that well. Our first like opening for our theme song just didn't sound good. There was a lot we did wrong starting off and you can try your best to make those things perfect. But at the end of the day, like unless you already have a following, you're you're probably not going to get much traction within those first few. And you'll be as long as you're willing to like learn and like learn from your mistakes and actually fall down to get back up, you can just kind of push forward. But just if it's something you're thinking about getting into, just it kind of like you guys said, be passionate about it, but then also push forward and just do it. Um, also, I remember when I, I like reached out to you and I started when we started Doughboys Media Podcast. And one of the things that you told me was to make sure you have buffer episodes in case anything happens. So yeah. aside from having buffer episodes, what is something that has like gotten into your way to of like putting out an episode a week? Have you ever missed a week or has anything ever come up where you guys have almost missed a week? And how did you guys like overcome that? So we went, we were actually on a streak for not missing a single episode. I think it was for like a year and a half. It was a long time. And we actually just had to miss it. Uh, I think last month was like our first or week missed. Um, remember I told you I got sick. I got, I don't know what it was. I got very, very, very sick for like two and a half weeks and it, whatever it was, it just, it just would not go away. Um, and then at the same time, the baby had RSV and then Sean got sick. And so it, it's just like, it was tough. We did, we did not have enough buffer time to kind of counteract the sicknesses. So it was unfortunate. It was like the first time where like we really missed it because we, we were bragging about it on every episode. We we're like consistency, this, 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 that, but yeah, streaks, streaks over. That's okay. Now you can restart it and yeah. start from scratch. Yeah. All right, so we, we have a segment here on the podcast. It's, a, it's a literally our only segment that we have, and we, and we typically have fun with it. It's called the Spitfire Questions, okay? And so what the Spitfire Questions are is we're going to, or I'm going to ask you just quick yes or no, this or that, if, and yeah. then questions. And without hesitation, you just have to answer it, okay? All right, so, you ready? Yeah. All right. Naruto or Dragon Ball Z? Naruto. Are you a geek, a nerd, or neither? Neither. What is the first app you open up in the morning? Twitter or X, whatever. Who's your favorite creator? Cybertron VGC. He's a Ooh. Pokemon, Pokemon YouTuber. What's your favorite Girl Scout cookie and when are you ordering? Mint's chocolate chip right after this recording. And the better well, question is when are they going to get delivered? That is a better question. Yeah, next, time we go to, <laughs> next time we go to so Korean barbecue. Um, <laughs> quality or quantity? Quality. Who has the better takes, you or Sean? I get people angry, so Sean. Your favorite rapper? Eminem. Rick and Morty or Family Guy? Rick and Morty. All right. Those were the, the, the Spitfire questions. And on the topic of, of Rick and Morty, did you know that Logan's favorite cartoon is Rick and Morty? I literally came to Hillsboro, Illinois. He sat me down to watch Rick and Morty. It's a fantastic it's, show. It's amazing. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's oh, amazing. Show, show Logan? yeah it's, it's an amazing. You know, I used to love The Simpsons until I watched Family Guy. And Family Guy was so much funnier to me than The Simpsons. I stopped watching The Simpsons. Then I saw Rick and Morty, and the same thing happened. I stopped watching Family Guy because Rick and Morty was so much funnier. I, I can like both. I don't know why I do that, but you can like both. And have you guys ever done an episode on like Rick and Morty or just cartoons in general, or has it always been strictly anime? You know what? That's that's what our Patreon is for, actually, where we do off-topic ones. So like we did a Game of Thrones tape, we did a, a like movies and other stuff. So everyone, you know what? Too I 
if I'm not mistaken, I believe a Rick and Morty anime is coming out. So the second that gets released, we'll be all over it. <laughs> that is sick. All right, Kevin, where can everyone find you on socials? Where can they go listen to the podcast? And how can they sign up to your Discord and Patreon? Yes, sir. So just look up the Shonen Tapes on Google. We're, we're pretty easily findable. Um, you can check out the Shonen Tapes on YouTube. We're on Spotify, Apple Music, every podcast platform, TikTok, Instagram, just just wherever you can think of. We're, we're there. Shonen Tapes. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and put all that information in the description below. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Kevin, for being here. Thanks, guys, for having me.